The R5C is an amazing camera, but it's also a tricky camera when it comes to connecting it to gimbals or remote control units, phones and computers in order to start and stop recording, change recording settings, transfer video files or use it for live streaming. So in this video I will explain what works and what doesn't and which workarounds exist. Okay, first let's look at how the R5C connects to a gimbal. The Ronin RS gimbals cannot only stabilize the camera, but also let you control some camera functions like start and stop recording, pull focus, change ISO and aperture. But unfortunately, not all of that works with the R5C, at least not in video mode. It is actually only possible to start and stop recording and pull focus manually without an external focus motor, just with the lens autofocus motor. And all of this is only possible when the camera is connected via USB-C. Although the RS3 and above can control cameras wirelessly via Bluetooth, that does not work with the R5C. And this might be a big deal for you because you probably want to power the R5C externally because the internal battery doesn't last very long. So if you have been using a USB-C power bank, you will have the problem that there is only one USB-C port on the R5C and you have to decide if you want to use it for the power bank or the gimbal. Unfortunately, even the RS4 cannot supply cameras with power via USB-C. So you have two options here. You can either use a USB-C splitter, which allows you to connect the camera to both the gimbal and the power bank, or you use a dummy battery in the camera. I talked about the pros and cons of powering the R5C with USB-C versus dummy battery in my R5C battery guide, so I recommend to check this out as well. So what if you want to control those other parameters like ISO and aperture from the gimbal? Well, your only option is to connect the focus motor to the control ring and then set that control ring to the respective camera setting. One interesting thing here, by the way, is that it is even possible to switch faces in face detection autofocus mode. So let's look at follow focus systems now. I have the small rig Magic Fizz, which has support for starting and stopping recording, but unfortunately none of this works with R5C. And I have done some research. This seems to be the case for the Tilta Nano 2 wireless lens control system as well. This might change with a firmware update at some point, but as of now, this is not possible. It is pretty surprising that the R5C is incompatible with so many other devices, especially because the R5 is compatible with many of those. And even more surprisingly, some of the talked about features work with the R5C when it is in photo mode. For example, the iOS app Canon Connect is a great remote control for most EOS R cameras, but in case of the R5C, it only works in photo mode, not in video mode. Although the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi hardware is in the camera, it cannot be used in video mode. The reason, I guess, is that the R5C runs Camera OS for video recording, and that seems not to be as advanced as Photo OS when it comes to connectivity. Anyway, Cinema OS has an awesome remote control feature of its own, and that is called Browser Remote. The nice thing about this is that it does not need an app. It just works in the browser of your computer, your phone, your iPad or whatever. It is also available in the R5C, but you have to get the WFT-R10 grip to use it. It looks similar to the battery grip BG-R10, but is a bit bigger and has a Wi-Fi module and an Ethernet port. It was introduced for the R5 already and the main purpose, I guess, is to provide a more stable network connection in studio environment in order to send pictures automatically to a computer or a server. So I'd say it's a quite niche product, and for that reason it costs over a thousand dollars. But for the i5C, this is the necessary accessory to be able to use browser remote, and that's crazy, if not insane. Since the i5C is, I think, aimed to solo filmmakers, controlling the camera or maybe multiple ones should have been a built-in feature. However, it is what it is and the WFT-R10 has received a significant price drop recently, at least in Germany. Or maybe you can get a used one and if you do, oh my god, for me this really completes the R5C. There are some quirks though, but first let's look what browser remote can do 
and how it works. So first, you have to go to the connectivity settings of the camera and set it up. Everything is described in the manual pretty well, so I will not go into details here, but it's important to know that the setup process consists of three parts or sections. The first one is the communication setting, and it describes how you connect to the camera. For example, should it connect using a wired network, or should it connect to an existing Wi-Fi, or should it create an own Wi-Fi network that other devices can connect to? Since you might need all those options at different times, or you work in different Wi-Fi's with different passwords, you can save up to 25 connection settings. Then the camera supports different functions. One of them is browser remote. There's also IP streaming, FTP transfers, and Canon app. And settings that you make here can be stored as so-called function settings. Then, in order to actually use browser remote, for example, you have to pick a communication setting and the respective function setting and store those as so-called connection setting. You can save 20 of those. So in my case, I use browser remote sometimes in my Wi-Fi at home and sometimes using a network cable and sometimes on the road where I have no Wi-Fi. So I have the camera create an access point so my phone can connect to it. And for that reason, I have three communication settings. I have just one function setting for browser remote and three connection settings that combine all of these. And now let's enable this one and the camera will connect to my Wi-Fi network. Then it shows this IP address here. And when I type this in my browser, I have to enter the password that I said before, and then I get this interface here. And this allows me to view and change all the important settings. And obviously I can enable live view, which has an acceptable amount of lag, as you can see and hear. So what I can do here is I can activate or deactivate autofocus. change the focus mode from face detection to focus window. I can tap to focus. And obviously I can also change things like ISO, shutter speed and so on. And obviously I can also start and stop recording, which I won't do right now because I'm recording. The whole thing also works on the phone since it just needs a browser. And you can see that the UI adjusts to fit the smaller screen. So there are some downsides to browser remote that I've noticed. If you're recording in log and want to use view assist to monitor in rec 709, that will not work for some reason. You'll always see the log footage in the live view. Then you can log into browser remote only from one device. So you cannot monitor the image from multiple devices because I guess the streaming would require too much processing power. Furthermore, it's not possible to view recordings via browser remote. When you go to replay in the camera, browser remote even shuts off and you'll have to re-log in again. The fact that this is completely built upon web technologies allows for some very advanced applications in case you know something about programming. So you can write scripts or whole applications that send commands to the camera and by that build completely unique solutions. While this is definitely a topic for a separate video, I just want to mention that the R5C does not support the Canon control API that they introduced so that developers can build custom applications like photo booths and industrial solutions that require automated image capture. Many Wi-Fi enabled cameras support this but the R5C officially does not. However, the API that the browser remote feature uses is actually very similar, but not documented, so you would have to do some reverse engineering here. The WFT R10 itself has some gotchas. Although it looks like a battery grip and has two batteries, it does not increase the battery life of the camera. The second battery is exclusively used by the Wi-Fi feature and when the first battery for the camera is empty, you will have to change that 
although the second battery still has power. And not only is the grip expensive, it also makes the camera bigger. And while it might be nice for vertical shooting to have that extra grip and set of buttons, you might have problems to balance the whole thing on a gimbal. And as far as I know, there is no camera cage that works with the grip. The ones for the BGR10 are too small. The C70 also supports browser remote, but has no built-in Wi-Fi chip. So to use that feature, you have to get a specific USB-C Wi-Fi dongle. I was wondering if that also works for the i5C. So I got it and tried it and it does not work. So you really need the WFT-R10. Besides browser remote, the R5C with the WFT-R10 can do IP streaming to a decoder in the network, which can either be a computer program or a hardware device. It is also possible to have the R5C upload video files to an FTP server and it should be possible to connect the R5C to a smartphone using the Canon Mobile Transfer app, which is a subscription-based app for some reason. I could not get it to work on my phone. I always got the error message that only the photo mode of the camera is supported here, which is contradicting the manual. Anyway, I'm not willing to pay monthly for transferring files to my phone honestly, so I stopped investigating. If you want to download footage to your computer without a card reader, you can use the EOS Utility app for Mac and Windows and start the camera into photo mode. Then you can download recordings that are in MP4. When you're doing very high quality work, then you're probably using XFAVC or RAW, then this does not work though. In that case, you really have to use a card reader to transfer the files. For some reason, downloading MP4s to the phone using the Canon Camera Connect app does not work for me. Although the files are visible, I get an error message saying that the download is not possible. What works really well on the R5C is using it as a webcam. Unlike for other EOS R cameras, you don't need the webcam utility. You just have to set USB-C mode to video output instead of peer-to-peer, -peer, and then the R5C immediately appears as a camera in your video chat software. This works a million times better than the webcam utility. It is super reliable and fast. Now let's go back one more time to the very basic thing to start and stop recording. What remote control options do we have here? The RC6 is an IR remote that could work in theory, but actually only does in photo mode. And with the BRE1, which uses Bluetooth, it's the same. However, the R5C has an N3 port for remote triggers. It is not a digital port. Triggering recording just works by connecting two of these pins, which is why there are very cheap remote triggers. And if you know how to solder, you might even build one yourself. Okay, I hope I could give you a good overview of how you can connect the R5C to other devices. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider to subscribe to my channel. I hope I'll see you in the next video.